you know, in the landscape of action heroes, we've had many. You know, we've had our, of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Dolph Lundgren, Sly Stallone, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Chuck Norris. You know, the list goes on and on. But um, we never had, and by we, I mean, as black people, we never had too many action heroes to call our own. But I can think of one. And unfortunately, to kick off Black History Month, we lost that one. Carl Weathers, perhaps best known for his role as Apollo Creed in the first four Rocky films, died on February 1st. He was 76 years old, best known also for Predator, Action Jackson, Happy Gilmore, and most recently, The Mandalorian. Carl, we will miss you. Your roles and characters were impactful, not only to black people, but also all of Hollywood. Rest in peace, Carl Weathers. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks, this is Do You Speak Geek. D-Y-S-G Keep it real, that's key We the best OGs Dope topics, come see D-Y-S-G Keep it real, that's key We the best OGs Dope topics, come see I got a question, do you speak geek? Yeah. New episodes on the podcast dropping each uh-huh. week. Get hip to the game. I'm giving y'all a sneak yeah. peek. Flavor for your ears. Bars flowing on unique beats. Hey. Blurs and nerds, freaks and geeks. The source wall wins. They dropping comics. You should cop. I think you don't up cheap. Yeah. Don't, don't sleep on Donna and Nicks. They preaching the gospel. Real ish, ill like mono. They sick. Right. Thumb life if you're into games with combos and kicks. This podcast is a gift. It's as real as it gets. Yeah. Blurs taking over. With clever marketing, we gain exposure. Feeding the community magic. Your boy's a nerd promoter. The dialogue is Jimmy Crack. Corn, we're aiming for gold. The truth was told. I can't speak for other platforms. Uh-huh. Sharp as cats out like knives, claws, and tack thorns. Yeah. We blacking out, going crazy like a black storm. DYSG, don't forget to follow back. Hosting on the airwaves, always keeping it a stack. Flowers to my haters, psych. I ain't giving y'all jack. Number one on the charts, give your boy a gold plaque. What's going on, people? It's your boy, Nix, your host. Welcome to episode 163, first and foremost. Shout out to my blurs. They represent the realness. And shout out to everybody who has been rocking with your boy thus far. But if you are new here, welcome to Do You Speak Geek? This is the podcast where we bring you all the latest and greatest inside the geek realm. Shout out to Spreaker, the home team. But if you are... Gonna get your podcast anywhere. Be sure you subscribe to Do You Speak Geek. Do You Speak Geek Media.com. DYSG Media.com coming soon, y'all. DYSG, CCW Podcast, The Love Blurs, and much more are coming soon. Again, DYSG Media.com. But in the meantime, please, please follow us on social medias Facebook at DYSGFB, Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets. Twitch at DYSG underscore games and Instagram, TikTok and threads at Do You Speak Geek. The YouTube channel, the only place to find the Donald and Daddy show. New content coming soon. I promise y'all. I, I'm i tired of saying it too without producing anything, but just keep keep close. We're going to give y'all some, some fire. Please subscribe, like Hulk, smash that bell for all notifications and leave comments. You want to know what you guys think. Also, hit up TacoNoir.com, your blurred box surprise every month. Maybe not every month. Every three months? Anyway, however often you get it, please be sure to use promo code DYSG. Get yourself a little something off. And please, please subscribe to BlurredStation.com. 
Blurt Station is your new black Hollywood destination. We're bringing y'all that fire, that heat. Go to BlurredStation.com and please subscribe. All right, y'all. We got a pretty decent show lined up for y'all right now. Let's go ahead and do what we do by this time, people. Let's speak geek. And tell him to suit up. Woo-hoo! Let's go! It's your boy Nick's D. Speak Geek. We live. Oh, nigga, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. I am here. <laughs> Acknowledge me. Well, what if the Hulk picked up Thor while Thor is holding the hammer? This is the way. Welcome to my nightmare. It has begun. Okay, we got reviews coming at your rapid fire. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Repetitive, bland, looter shooter that, despite a somewhat engaging story, it never stays fun long enough. I don't have to say anymore. Y'all know this game was just not it. Anyway, Percy Jackson and the Olympians Season 1. It adds to the, the pantheon itself of the young adult adaptations with a... Com- competent yet bumpy first season on television it succeeds in both fan service and welcoming new audiences so definitely check that out and y'all get a chance Argyle now this was a miss a complete all star cast I mean a all star wannabe mind bender of a spy caper it has a sweetness missing with Matthew Vaughn's last few semi fantastical action movies but it's also a sluggishly paced dump that fails to cohere. I mean, it's just, it's not good. It's not good. And finally, we have Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Now, this is one I was kind of on the fence about, but damn, was this good. Great spy show and even better relationship comedy. I mean, Donald Glover, I'm, I'm sorry I doubted you. I, I, I apologize. But yeah, check this one out, y'all, for sure. Let's go ahead and get into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all know the vibes. Source Wall. The Source Wall with the... You gotta do superhero laughing. Wait for it. I started out, I wanted to write comic books when I was younger. To make the comic book world as diverse as the real world. There is nothing better than a comic book. Have y'all read this? Have y'all read this? I'm pretty sure they have it, King. Let's get into it. The pull list this week. We got Batman 142. The tragic death of the leader of the Red Hood gang in a vat of chemicals has become the subject of myth. But what is the heartbreaking and gruesome tale of the monster who walked away from that violent birth? And how does it affect Batman's distant future? The Joker, year one, begins here. All right. I guess DC is finally ready to give it an official canonical origin story so let's see what we got ultimate black panther number one in the wake of ultimate invasion khonshu and Ra, the force known together as moon knight are seeking to expand their brutal control of the continent of africa in response the lone bulwark against them the isolated nation of wakanda will send forth its champion its king the black panther from the creative minds of Brian Hill and Stefano Cassili comes a bold new take on the world of Black Panther and Wakanda. Mmm, check this one out, y'all. Speaking of cats, Thundercats number one. Fleeing through space to escape their dying home world, the Thundercats were attacked en route by their mortal enemies, the Mutants of Plundar. After diverting their damaged flagship to a planet called Third Earth, The surviving Thundercats now strive to rebuild their society in harmony with the world's new natives. But the mutants, determined to possess the Thundercats' mystical gem, the Eye of Thundera, have attacked them and they're looking to forge an alliance with Mumra, the devil priest of Third Earth. Now the Thundercats, led by an inexperienced Lion-O, must band together as never before to protect their legacy from this combined enemy. But will they be able to withstand the onslaught of Mumra, the ever-living, once he sets his eyes upon them? I don't know, y'all, but 24 pages of a banger we're going to find out. I'm definitely getting that one because that's one of my favorite cartoons of all time. <sighs> I digress. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, The Return, number one. 
In an alternate universe, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers finally defeated Rita Repulsa and Lord Zed, but at a terrible cost. In the wake of a tragedy, the team went their separate ways. 22 years later, the long disbanded team reunites to mourn the loss of beloved friends. But Zack and Billy have some unexpected information to share. Jason, the Red Ranger, has been operating as a lone vigilante and has since disappeared. Will the remaining Rangers be able to track him down, especially with the mysterious figure in pursuit? Written by actress, screenwriter, and director Amy Jo Johnson, the OG Pink Ranger herself, along with rising co-star Matt Holson and renowned artist Nico Leon, fans can experience something unlike anything they've ever had before in the Power Rangers universe in TV or comics. This one's going to be a banker. I can't wait to get my hands on this one. Yeah, that's 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 not hard. The One Hand, number one. Neo Novin detective Ari Nasir is about to retire with an invadable record until a brutal murder occurs, bearing all the hallmarks of the One Hand killer, which should be impossible since Ari already put him away not once, but twice in the years before. What follows is a deadly cat and mouse game as Ari pursues his quarry down the rain soaked streets of Neo Novin. Ari will stop at nothing to unravel the secrets and ciphers of this case, but each relationship only leads further into darkness and the future metropolis of Ari's own bewildered soul. Grippingly written by award-winning writer Ram V. Yo, Ram is so crazy good. With hauntingly atmospheric art and covers by Lawrence Campbell and Lee Luridge. The One Hand is a mini series that will keep you guessing until the very end. <laughs> yeah, this one sounds dope. I'm getting this one. And finally, we have Star Wars Mace Windu number one. One of the greatest Jedi must stop an incendiary secret from falling into the wrong hands. Even in the years before the Clone Wars, Mace Windu was known for his discipline, determination, and combat skills. When a scientist's discovery threatens the balance of the galaxy, Mace is led down a treacherous path of mystery and action. Introducing Azita Cruz, a pirate with a deadly secret, who the Huts and the Republic will stop at nothing to control. Now, see, I did, it's not going where I thought it was going to go, you know, seeing how, oh, Mace survived, but, you know, I guess we'll see what happens. But, yo, pick these up this week, y'all, and be sure to pick them up at your local comic book store. Let's watch this. Watch this. You have failed this city. I did not try to kill you. Four headed demon. Shy D, shy mean D, bro. You're saying D, D. You say I'm arrogant, I say damn right. You've got me. Who's got you? I'm a dude playing the dude disguised as another dude. Okay, you couch potatoes. James Gunn has found his Supergirl. So, James Gunn and Peter Safran's DCU reboot officially has its Supergirl. Gunn confirmed on threads that actress Millie Alcock will be donning the cape following reports from The Warp, writing, Welcome to the DCU, Millie Alcock. Alcock, famously known from House of Dragon, is said to have beat out Emilia Jones and Meg Donnelly for the role, according to a report by Deadline. It's unclear whether she will appear in Superman Legacy, though she is reportedly expected to appear in a DCU film long before taking the role of the title character in Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's going to be pretty good. I can't wait to see... uh, Millie take on the uh, role of the woman of tomorrow, Supergirl, Soup's cousin. Can't wait to see that. Um, what do y'all think of this casting? Are we liking it? Are we loving it? Are we hating it? So an SNL movie is coming out about the 1975 cast, and here are a few new castings. Sony's Saturday Night Live behind the scenes retelling SNL 75 has tapped a group of actors to play some of the classic show's most iconic cast members. Deadline reports that the Jason Reitman directed movie has tapped Lamorne Morris to play Grant Morris, no relation. Dylan O'Brien to play Dan Aykroyd. Corey Michael Smith as Chevy Chase. 
and Matt Wood as the late John Belushi. It's a lineup of actors who aim to help reimagine one of the series' most important nights. Morris O'Brien, Smith, and Wood are joining a cast that's quickly coming together. Other roles that have already been picked up for SNL 1975 include Gabriel LaBelle as SNL's longtime leader, Lauren Michaels, Cooper Hoffman as Dick Ebersol, and Rachel Sinat as Rosie Schuster. Other cast members, as previously reported by Deadline, include Kim Matula, who is playing Jane Curtin, Ella Hunt, who will betray Gilda Radner, and Emily Farn, who is set to play Lorraine Newman. This movie's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. I think it's gonna be pretty good. Um, we'll have to see what goes from there. Y'all excited? Maybe not, but I like it. I'm a, I'm still an SNL fan. Yeah, I'm still a fan. All right, so Deadpool three is a uh, getting a certain director very excited. X Men first class director Matthew Vaughn is bigging up the impact of the upcoming superhero movie and its effect that it will have on the MCU while promoting Henry Cavill's star-studded film Argyle, which sucked. Vaughn discussed Deadpool 3 and its starring duo Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman on Bro Bible's Pro Podcast special. Um, The few snippets that I know of Deadpool vs. Wolverine or Wolverine vs. Deadpool, I'm sure that argument between Ryan and Hugh is happening as we speak are unbelievable. That's going to be the jolt. The Marvel Universe is about to have a jolt of them, and it's going to bring that body back to life. I think Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman are about to save the whole Marvel Universe. Vaughn added that as a genuine fan of the X-Men, all I want is for the movie to be as good as they should be. Now, personally, I don't think the MCU is dead. Has it been as great as it's been? No. Has it sucked? No. I'm not sure whatever you guys are watching, but the MCU is not trash. You guys are probably just jaded now because everything is an end game. But I digress. Saving it, bring it back to life, and it's not dead. Now, is that saying I'm not excited about it? Yeah, I think it'll be dope. But back to life? Well, eh, that's a bit much. Anywho, last bit of news here. We got 28 years Later, it's confirmed, after years of waiting and radio silence, the much-anticipated sequel to 28 Weeks Later has finally been confirmed with Sony Pictures acquiring the rights to distribute 28 years later and its sequel. THR reports that Sony Pictures has secured the rights for 28 years later with a sequel to the film Greenlit as well. The outlet notes that the bidding came down to Sony and Warner Bros. before the former secured the rights. Dan Boyle and Alex Garland, who directed and wrote the 2002 28 Days, will return to the project and its sequel. Boyle will direct 28 years later, but it is yet to be confirmed whether he will direct the follow-up, while Garland is set to write the script for both films. Okay, so this zombie joint's coming back. Are we excited? Maybe we'll get it in time for Halloween? I don't know, but sounds like it's going to be a good time. Let's go ahead and hop into Thumb Life. Wars are won by those that are willing to sacrifice everything. Don't you dare say it! Jackpot! Here's James. Oh, oh my goodness, the slam! If you know my moves, you know I'm gonna wreck you. Cabimo? Ah, Chilu. The best way to practice is by dueling. Duelists, take your marks. Okay, gamers, let's get into it. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Bando Namkai has revealed that the first 24 characters that will be playable in the upcoming game, let's just say I hope you guys like Super Saiyans. <laughs> so, its first title in the long-running Budokai Tenkaichi series to be released in well over a decade. According to developer Spike Chunsoft, it will feature reactive environments and a large roster of playable characters sporting their own iconic transformations, abilities, and techniques. This past Monday, Bando Namkai confirmed the identities of the first 24 playable characters that will take center stage, each and every one of them being a variant of rivals Goku and Vegeta. Needless to say, the 24 variants showcased today represent more of a, uh, a sliver of what Spike Chumsoft has promised will be an incredible number of playable characters yet to be revealed. 
A roster screen featured at the end of the newly release suggests that there could be over 150 fighters and fighter variants in the lineup, including Android 18, Mr. Satan, Cell, Piccolo, Krillin, and a range of other fan favorites. Good God. Over 150 different characters and maybe even character variants? <sighs> Yo, that's going to be... Crazy. I hope you can transform mid fight. That'll be fun. I hope you can. But uh yeah. Sounds like it's gonna be dope. I can't wait to play that. Alright, y'all. PlayStation State of Play of January. Let's get into what was revealed. Some of the highlights. Kojima Productions shared a traditionally lengthy trailer for Death Stranding 2, which is now officially titled Death Stranding 2 on the Beach. Norman Reedus is Sam Porter Bridges returns, and it's appears he's facing off against a new group called Drawbridge. There was a lengthy sequence with potential villain using a chainsaw guitar hybrid weapon that shoots lightning. Interesting. And that's just one of the crazy things that happened in the trailer. Check that out, y'all. Now, this one I'm hyped for. Rise of Ronin, March 22nd. And Team Ninja gave the best look we have seen so far the upcoming game. We got to look at the hub world for Yokohama. One-on-one sword combat with a parry system. And this game is so beautiful. Mm, I can't wait to get my hands on it. <sighs> okay, moving on. <laughs> Sega revealed Sonic X Shadow Generations, which is an enhanced remaster of Sonic Generations with new content featuring Shadow the Hedgehog. The teaser trailer showed the same levels we saw in the original Sonic Generations from 2011, as well as new levels where Shadow will take the lead. Okay, all right, that's going to be pretty dope. Lastly, we have Konami showed up to State of Play to reveal Silent Hill, the short message, a free-to-play Silent Hill spinoff that will be available to play later on this week. Konami also shared a new trailer for the Silent Hill 2 remake, but no release date or window has been given. So, a lot of news there, y'all. I'm ready for Rise of Ronin. (laughs) That's just me personally. But um, what did you guys think? Was this one a win for PlayStation for the new set of play January? Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Mm, Let's go ahead and mark out. Acknowledge me. All right, people, check this out. Free agent alert, free agent alert, free agent alert. Just as the Bloodline saga has taken yet another turn in WWE with the almost confirmed headliner of The Rock versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40, another member of the fabled NOI family has hit the free agent market as former MLW World Heavyweight Champion Jacob Fatu's contract with the company has come to an end. A tweet from Hall of Famer Rikishi, the Fatu's uncle, raised eyebrows this week, calling Fatu the baddest talented indie worker on the scene and wondering who will sign him after tagging the official Twitter accounts of both WWE and AEW. Cassidy Haynes of BodySlam.net was able to confirm Fatu's contract status, citing independent sources while also reporting he is still set to appear in MLW's Philadelphia show tapings, where he will square off against Yuji Nagata. At this point, with The Rock now seemingly set to square off against Reigns, speculate on just what, what would happen here with the new story. Anything is bound to happen. Yo. I can understand wanting to be your own man. You know, carve out your own destiny. Go somewhere where you will be the star of the show, where you will get the TV time. And that's me looking over to the left at AEW. But if I look over to my right, and literally all my family is over there, I mean, like, all of them, why would I not? You know what I'm saying? But whatever Jacob decides, I'm pretty sure it's going to... Definitely shake the landscape of professional wrestling 
it's going to be dope either way. So that is the pod. I hope you guys had a good time with me. I had a good time with you. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks for listening. Please be sure to listen to this podcast. Subscribe to it. Follow social media, Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube channel. Please follow and subscribe. Remember, y'all, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek? <laughs>